wrong person because you just see potential when they're not really putting the work into it. So, and you, and you know, by putting the work into it, and and I just wanted to start to show off. I mean, right from the get go, because <laughs> it's a it's about putting the work into. It. And I like to thank you for coming on Bridges Live, and that's easy, Doctor Paul. This is Doctor Latasha Holden. But when we're talking about telling someone to put the work into it, they're not getting it as easy as we like them to. What, well, you know what? I mean, and Farrell, as you know, um, what's your grandmaster? Yeah, in yeah. martial arts, yeah. Martial artist. So, you know, it's not it's not an easy thing. Let's just start. I mean, if, if change was easy, everybody would like would be living the life they want. It's not an easy thing. I often tell people the wilderness is a painful but powerful place at the same time. You know, it's a painful place because that's when God is stripping you of everything, of old habits and ways and people. But it's a powerful place because he's preparing you to take you to where you, where he's, you know, your destiny. But that's it. Because it's a painful place, a lot of people don't want to go there. They don't, they don't want to go through what they need to go through in order for God to do what he's going to do in your life. But is, is that, you know, and before we get to your book and everything, the, the question I have is that... I, how is someone supposed to, because you got to have this belief, right? You got to have mm-hmm. this true faith of things that's not seen, right? Yeah. Or things that not, that you know very little or any of. That's the hard part, isn't it? Yeah, that is. That is. You, you know, looking back now, when I was enrolling in that um, college, living in that board of house and squatters in 2007, I could not see, you know, then... I couldn't see how it was going to end, how it was going to turn out. Am I crazy? All those thoughts were going through. And I just said, you know what? I got to take a chance. I, I, I mean, you know, when your back is against the wall, it's one or two things going to happen. You're either going to fight or run, mm. fight or flight. You, which one? And I was just, I maybe my kids was there that made me decide to fight. But in my humanness, I wanted to go somewhere and hide. You know, I didn't, I didn't know what that was going to look like on the other side of, you know, of, of being where I was. <laughs> Shoot, I, I, I was comfortable being a little, you know what I'm saying? I, I, had got, I was 35 years old, so I was comfortable being where I was. But my kids, I just knew I had to fight. And, and that's how I started the process. So, you know, and I want you to talk about your kids because you cannot be a prouder parent <laughs> than to want to talk about your kids. Because we were talking about with one of them, one of my children's and how they're suffering through their things, but your kids are just, did they get, did they get mental help? Did they get help with their emotions and their trauma? Um, well, they're not afraid if they need to go to counseling, I'm like, go, you know, and not just that my son started 10 and a half years of Marine. Right. He just became a staff sergeant. So I want you to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so for me, um, the odds, Okay, for those who don't know the story, one, two se- second summary. I went from being homeless in the streets of Atlanta for four years with six children to run for city council in the 2017 election from a GED to a doctorate in leadership studies. I'm now a 14-time published author, and I released my first comic book last year, and I was Georgia and National Mother of the Year for 2020. So how I let my six children out of homelessness and hopelessness, my thing was to keep them from the school to prison pipeline. Right. You know, because we was in a vulnerable situation. At that time, I had two boys in high school, two girls in middle school, and a little girl, a little boy in elementary. So that that was that was a thing. I just I think for me, my kids saw me be human. They saw me depressed. They saw me scared. You know, they saw me. They knew I was admitted to the hospital for a week because my mental health from being homeless had started to wear on me. But I think because I just, I never put any expectations on them. My thing was, I told my children, I will always bag you as long as you're not a um, menace to society, you're not breaking the law. I said, if you can be the janitor, and I'd be proud of you. You just be the right. best janitor. So I gave them yes. the freedom, yeah. Yeah. you know, and out of me giving them the freedom and showing them how to be leaders and everything. My son, he'll be 32 this year. He served 10 and a half years in the Marines. Now he's graduating in May with his associates. Another son became a caretaker. I have a daughter. She'll be 28 in two weeks next week. And um, she's a third-year college student. She's an EMT, licensed pharmacy yeah, tech. Yeah. Another daughter, she graduated last year with her bachelor's in liberal studies. She's in the Army now, three years serving. Mm-hmm. 
Another daughter, that's a 19-year-old. She's a four-time published author. She has several businesses, and she just launched her first tabletop game for children. And my 18-year-old son, Omega, is a senior in high school. He's a youth leader. And um, it, it, to see my leadership principles take root into them, even my nine-year-old grandson became a published author a week before Christmas. So now my God has allowed me to see my children's children. And it's all about, you know, it's all about the grace of God. And, yeah. and, you know, and that's why we, when we talk about developing generational success, we mm-hmm. can talk about wealth as financial. We can, but yeah. when I talk about success, is that when your children can see what they can be, that's generational success. Yes, yes. As we see with 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 um, the old president that just went out, you can have the money, but look at the kids. Right, right. right. You, that, I mean, you can be. He's up there with the, you know, he's yeah. a billionaire, so you can have the money. But what, what kind of children are you producing? What? Are they leaders? Are they compassionate? Are mm-hmm. they are they servant servant leaders? You know, or is it all about them and their money and what they're going to do and look down? And so for me, I just taught my six children the importance of servant leadership when we didn't have anything, and they just taken off. And you just started. You just finished up your book. Your book, so they can grow. Yeah, I, I, my first parenting guide. It's a mini guide. I want to share. It's about five short chapters, but I wanted to share the meat of what I did or the things I, I wanted. The first chapter, I definitely wish I would have known then. Is And I just share a little bit. The first chapter I learned now, and I'm like, yes, I wish I would have had this book when I was, you know, but I was, for people who want to have kids, you know, starting a family, you got to really know who you are first before you start having people. You got to know where you come from, what's your thought process, how you view parenting, and not only that, you got to really, it's not just you having a, who you're having a child with. Who is that guy you're having a child with? Because you're not just having a child with him. What about his family? What? Mm-hmm. It, it, so now I'm like, God, darn it, I sure wish I can go. <laughs> you know, because I struggle. I got me some guys back then. Like they say you did it to level your self-esteem. I guess mine was shot that you know where. Because some, some people I look back, I'm like, what was I thinking? You know, but, but, but that there it is. I mean, it's not so much what were you think, it's where your heart was thinking, yeah, where you were yeah. mentally at. And you do date at the level of your self esteem, and so that's so, yeah, I'm very proud of this book. So, it is, like, wait a minute, you do you think, do you think you date at the level of your self esteem with all relationships, right? Mm hmm. So if you, the person you're dating is the reflection of what your self-esteem is like, that's the telltale sign. Yes, yes. And it's funny because huh. when I got into the relationships, the guy saw more. The, people can see more about you than you can see. Mm-hmm. And so that's when the abuse started coming because they, they were so scared that I was going to outgrow them. You know, because I was different, it was just mm-hmm. my mindset. Because how I was raised, I was I was raised. You're nobody, and then you could do right. But they saw she's different. She can do this. She can. But so I had to cover, you know, like shrink myself so I won't make them mad. But yeah, it's definitely a reflection, and it's nothing bad. I mean, I didn't know who I was back then, you know. And it's and you can always tell those guys twenty, thirty years ago are still in the same place. 30 years later, 20 some years later. I think it's amazing how they saw what they were afraid of and what you could be. Yeah. And that's what brought on abuse. You know, they tried to down, you know, they, they verbally abused me. And I, and I, I mean, and for me, that's what made the journey hard mm-hmm. when I found myself homeless. Cause now I'm 35 years old. So I've been abused. I've been really neglected. My family treated me like the black sheep. So the mental shift that had to take place for me to turn everything around, shoot, that was almost just unbearable as being home. And and that's the pain. That's the pain suffering you're talking about when God says it would it would take you through to to make you to build you what you really are. Yeah, yeah. But the thing about it is, the longer you've been in that muck and mire, the longer you've been in that mud, that's a lot of stuff. Thirty five years, he got the he. I mean, if it was shoot. Man, I, and that's probably why we was homeless for years. Right. You know, I probably had to go around the bush. I'm pretty sure I did. I had to go around the mountain a couple of times because I'm crying. I'm, I'm pleading with him. God, please, you know. But now I'm seeing why the, that experience was necessary to be who I am and where he's taking me. 
you know, for all, us being his parents, and I'm so proud of my kids and they're making, I love my kids, but we, we worry about our children. Mm-hmm. Is a parent, is there a different word we can use or a different place we can be besides worry and encouragement, but allow them to be what they're going to be? Well, now since all of my children are 18 and over, like one thing my mom said um, before she passed two years ago, she said, I worry about y'all now more than when you are when you were all adults and then when you was children. And she said, because I guess when they're in the house, you still have some kind of control. Mm-hmm. You know, she said, but when y'all grown, I just, so for me, um, as much as I've taught them how to carry themselves, they still people, you know. I just told my kids this. I said, I'm going to tell you this, and, I, and this is in my book. I say, there's always consequences, good or bad. Play that picture all the way out, and so that gives me rest. You know, I worry. Mm-hmm. For me, I worry more because I know I raised them right, and I know the world is not so kind. Right. So for me, my world might, I just tell them, you're always a representative of yourself. But you know what, Dr. Di, no matter what we do, other once they get out of our, our care, they got so many other influences. Yeah. And, and, I mean, they've been bombarded by and social media and, and, and the nudity you can see and the, the filth you can see now on social media. They, uh, You just got to relax and just, like, what I do, you know, I, I laid down the roots. I told them, you know, whatever decision they made, that's, that's a bad and good consequence to it. If you're willing to do the time on whatever, you're willing to do the, you're willing to do the crime, you're willing to do the time. That's how I put it. <laughs> that's that old Beretta show. I remember that show, that old Beretta. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. You don't, don't do the crime because I can't help you, you know. And so even my daughters, uh, out of six kids, I have three grandchildren. My sons are 32. Well, he'll be 32 in June, 30, and my uh, youngest son will be 19 this year. I have no grandchildren for my boys. My daughters... Um, my 27-year-old got one daughter. She's seven. And my 28-year-old got two. They'll be 10 and eight. And the reason why, you know, and and, and, I, I, and I, what I did, I cut the string to where I'm like, look, I'm not watching. That's why I don't have no more kids. And I'm, thank, I'm thankful. I'm, like, I'm not watching nobody. And they see, mama, you are birth control. And I said, oh, thank you. Yeah, you ain't watching nobody. You ain't sitting at home. You, you know, and they realize they want to live life. Right. You know, so to have boys at 32 and 30 with no kids, that's a blessing. You know, my girls, they take an excellent care of the two, one kids. They, but they know, I, I'm like, look, I'm going to live my life. So whatever whatever we do, we could just do the best. We, I did my best. And that's why I wrote the last chapter of my book, I, in my book, my parenting guide. After I sh- shared four lessons that I learned, I in the last chapter, that fifth chapter, I wrote a chapter to parents to uplift them. You know, because kids can be hard on us. And, and what is that, you know, because a lot of parents are, it's hard for us to uplift ourselves when we feel like there's maybe one thing more we can do. And and that's why I wrote, I'm like, you know, we did the best we could with what we knew how at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I couldn't, my kids didn't have nothing really name brand, no fancy toys that came out or nothing. It was a hand-me-down. And I had to get to a place where I had to stop feeling and that's what this really was the thing. It took me a minute to write this parenting guy. I'm like, dang, I wasn't able to provide the stuff they wanted. And I'm like, and, 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 and God, the Holy Spirit started, are you, is that's what's holding you back from not writing this book? <laughs> Ladies, share with you. Have, you have showed how you raised six children from homelessness and hopelessness. Mm-hmm. And all you're figuring out, well, you didn't have, because they complained about they didn't have the latest clothes. Right, and, right. But look at the fruit at, at the end, you know. And I just say, you know what, parents, whatever you didn't have, don't let the kids of people, they have learned your weaknesses. They, they've been with you all mm-hmm. your life. They know how to play on you. They know how to make you feel bad. <laughs> you did what you could do at the time. You did what you, you know. And one of my daughters, when she when she got about 18, 19, um, mom, I'm going to show you how I'm going to win. I ain't going to never be. I'm going to have this and that. When she got about 25, oh, Lord, how did you do it? I didn't know if this hot. Let them live long enough and have their family. Believe me, they're going to see if parenting is not as easy as they thought it was. Well, I'm proud of you. I'm just, you're just a, such a dear friend. And, and I, you know, this month, last month, Black History Month, this month is, you know, let's cherish our women. But yet we are still not doing enough. Yeah. So thank you for being who you are. And thank you. 
for shining your bright light here in this universe and being a strong woman you are. And, I, you know, that's why I want to have you on this month for this show for this particular reason is to so you can speak to my daughters and the daughters and the sisters and the mothers and, and all the women out there who just have not said to themselves, yes, I can. Yeah, I mean, and one thing I do, um, when we were talking earlier, when you date at the level of your self-esteem, and you can always tell where you were when you date somebody, that's when you can look back and, like, what was I thinking? Mm. I mean, you know, one, I don't know what happened when you fall in love with these people. It's like the, 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 you get some blinders on your eyes, you can't see, but when you're no longer in that space, you just, and you realize, what was I thinking? Because you see the growth in yourself. You know that person wouldn't be who you would date. Now, it's nothing to put somebody down, but you can see if they're still. I mean, like my oldest son is 32. His father is still in the same place that he was when I met him when I was 16, 17. So it's, it's, it, we as, as women, we just got to get to a place, and mothers, where we learn how to sprinkle a little love and compassion on ourselves. We show everybody else love and un unconditional love and compassion. But we forget ourselves. You was a person before you had children, before you got married, with your own dreams and goals. And I think society will it almost push you back to the back burner. Um, did you see Coming to America too? I did. I did. So my spiritual, um, did you see, I, uh, I don't know if you caught my little spiritual insight I post about the movie. No, no, I didn't. Well, the, the, the two things I caught from that spiritually was, first about the sun, the, um, that God just because nobody knows about you or Does, know that you even are, are here, God, even if it's 30 years later, God know how to find you. And what he already do, God know how to bring you to the position that he has ordained for you, even if nobody knew you. You don't even have to worry about it. Wow. wow. God, God is always on time. When he that, that little guy was just as happy he didn't sit there too much. Grip. God knew the right time. So God knows the right time to position you. You just have to trust him. Now, when it came to his oldest daughter, mm -hmm. sometimes the enemy will have people have you think that people fit to take your rightful place, that people fit to take your seat at the table. Have you been preparing all your whole you life to, for all your whole life for? But God is saying you just stand in your power. See, God, what, what God has for you is for you. At the end, that young lady did not lose her seat at the table. She was still elevated. So even though the enemy might try to bring people along that seem like, God, he can't ahead. I've been just, just it almost let, she almost let her ego. Yes. Get, yes. D d take her mm -hmm. off of her space. She yes, almost yes. let ego take her off her space. And that's the one thing, the ego, the devil, you, there is always this thing that's going to try to test you to see yes. if it can remove you from the space you're supposed to be in. That's it. And once she, like she said, once she let that go, she, and she just stood in her power when, when Eddie, you know, when he went off and she's, I'm like, okay, this is who I am. This is who, and she showed, and she still was able to stand. Mm -hmm. Elevation came and she, her right. So sometimes things are a test to see, are you going to have this me, me, my, I've been, or are you going to stand in the power of God and wait and see the salvation of God? I mean, and, and so I just like, wow, sometimes we get ahead of ourselves and for me, if I was to start complaining, okay, God, I'm homeless. I ain't got no car. I ain't got no 401k. I'm 35 years old. I just have a GED. But I just kept pushing. I kept pushing when people were laughing at me, crying. I checked myself into a mental hospital because the, the weight of the world for being homeless with six kids was weighing on me. But I, when I got to the hospital, I went, I went right back to class. I kept going. And the more I kept going and losing ego, and losing ego for me, well, I'm gonna keep showing up. I don't care who laughing at me. I'm gonna keep showing up. I don't care who, who, who may talk about me. As long as you keep showing up in your power, God will do what He said He's gonna do. So you know, and I think, I think when the question gets asked from that internal voice, mm -hmm. should I keep showing up, mm -hmm. or can I keep showing up? Don't look for yourself for the answer, but look to your higher power to give you the answer. Because I think if we answer it ourselves, we'll say no every time. Yeah. I you know, I definitely agree with you. I mean, I, I, I tell you, just looking back sometimes, I've that people don't really know the kind of rejection. I was hit left and right with rejection. 
you guys understand. So I'm being hit by family member with rejection and, and a little part from my children because they wanted stuff. So they're hitting me. I'm trying my yeah, best. Yeah. I'm going to school. And, and then, oh, mama, why we got the struggle? Why we don't have that? So I'm being hit. My self-esteem, I'm being hit, you know. But it's like I'm drowning up on the water. But every time I come up, it's like I'm, my goal was to get my sis children safely to shore. You know, I was drowning mentally and emotionally because every breath I took above water, I poured into them. Mm. You know, but nobody was pouring back into back me. Back into you, yeah. Yeah, so I was, so now, to be honest with you, I'm learning how to come out of survival mode. You know, I'm I'm still I'm still talking myself. It's okay. It's okay if you want to do this. It's a. I've been in survival mode when I'm penny pinch. I was homeless. What this? What that? So even now, I'm talking myself. Um, how to be calm? How to how to sprinkle a little love and compassion on myself? You know, you successfully got your kids safely to shore, and so that's where I'm at now. I'm even learning how to be kind to myself. Do you? What do you find that's the hardest about being able to sprinkle love into yourself? Um, feeling unworthy, feeling like, um, mm-hmm. even in the know, quiet you, time, you don't deserve it. Um, uh, for me, I'm, I'm doing better with the imposter syndrome, Yeah, you know, yeah. um, you know, feeling maybe because for me, I feel like my life wasn't traditional where the lady go to high school, she graduated, go to college, right, she's right. in a sorority. She's been on her job 20, 30 years and. She got this big four one bank account and a nice house, nice car. Mm. But because I don't have that stuff, I just look at what 30 years did. My, but, but the currency that I see in my children, because mm-hmm. I know a lot of women that make $100,000 a year and their kids are, are out of control. So for me, my 30 years, it has not been working on somebody's job or, or net, it's been a parent. It's been, I took my response. I laid down and had my kids, whether somebody stayed or lead or left. I had a, I had a duty to protect them and raise them and see them, you know, until they graduate high school, you know? And so for me, I just rested. And so that's why I'm like, you know what? Yeah. You probably didn't work on a job 30, you know, 20 some years or been in the military, but you did successful when you raise your kids, you know, to be leaders in their own right. So I'm looking at success differently for me. Me too. I agree yeah. with you because I, I don't have the success that someone who has done the things have done mm-hmm. or done less and they have all these other things. And I, I too, and it's a, it is a practice. It's a daily practice. Yeah. And, and, and people say, well, don't you pray? Don't you meditate? Don't you work on? I say, I do all those things, but yet there's these little pieces that you really have to hold on to those nuggets and, and strip away to say, man, who am I? And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Well, society tells us you're, you're not successful if you don't live in this zip code, drive this car, and <laughs> your house. So society is bombarded. I mean, that's why you see so many females going to get the, the face you know, yeah, Botox yeah, and yeah. breast implants, butt out, because they want to make it. And and for and in their mind, the only way to make it, I have to look like this. The only way to so I don't feel I don't I don't have nothing bad to say about them because that's what they're being fed. Right, right. You know, this is what they say success look like. I have to go alter my body. And so for me, I'm just at a place, you know what, this is me. I'm I'm old school, I'm plain Jane. I don't know none of you know, I'm just, you know what, this is who you are. And Dr. Dr. Dye, this one thing I noticed, the more I look at news mm-hmm. and the more I look at the fast life, mm-hmm. one time I, cause I, I, I basically 30 years, I basically been a house mom. And so I'm like, God, I think I missed out on some stuff. But when I start seeing people talking about they were drawing out there in the clues and they were, I said, you know what? Thank you Lord for keeping me. The stuff I thought I was missing out on because I was in the house, mm-hmm. protecting my six children so they can go up at least have some kind of future. I, I had to thank him because society had you think you don't miss out on the world. If you ain't with this clique. You ain't with this sorority. You ain't with this group. And and all the while, a lot of times, God has protected a lot of us from things we don't even know. Right. We, things that we didn't even know that we should have yeah. known. They, it yeah. was keeping you alive from just by no, not knowing it. Exactly. Ah, you know, it. we know you're in Atlanta. I know you're in Atlanta. But tell people where you are. Tell people how they can get a hold of you and get your book. Well, um... Like Dr. Dyer said, I am in Atlanta, Georgia. If you want to, uh, I do empowerment coaching. I'm an inspirational speaker. 
I have books ranged from children's books, my life story, a book on leadership. Um, and I'll just release a mini guide, parenting guide. It'll be available April 1st on Kindle. And I also got the paperback that's coming out as well. You can reach me at www.drlatarshaholden.info, I-N-F-O. There is no period after doctor, just drlatarshaholden.info. Or you can reach me by email, latarshaholden at yahoo.com. And I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Those are my three major social media sites. Well, this is the new book I got coming out with. Um, there's, a, there's about 17 other writers. And okay. it's called Iron Sharpers Iron Volume 2. Um, I'm one of the authors in this book. And I, I wrote wrote my chapter. And it's it's a nice book. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. That's coming off. That's in May. That's coming out in May. Okay, what's your chapter about? Just you know, it's about it's the science of health, the science okay. of health in the mind. Yeah. So, Doctor Dyer, um, with the mental, I, I don't know if we because I just gave my information at this time. No, I don't want to keep going. Okay, what? Yeah. Okay, the mental from from you with people because you know when we see you, you yeah. know you like our you know our our, our brother Jackie Chan, you know <laughs> you know when we see you, that's but that's what I get. I like okay, there goes Jackie Chan right now, but. but What's the, is there a false belief about people who meditate as to what you're in, the way you out there with nature and that you're kind of living, everything is just peaceful all the time. Everything is just. Yeah. yeah it, it, so it's not always peaceful. Is If I answer your question correctly. And yeah. I think the why the way I've been trained to practice and how strong I practice, it's in those outdoor areas where I'm working on myself and that's that hard concentration especially the some people have said well I've Dr. Paul I've seen you out in the snow with no shirt on well that's that concentrated meditation on complete self of lifting you out of that mud and mm-hmm. cleaning you off because you cannot vibrate at a high frequency where you have energy that is warming your body if you are a non-believing Okay. Okay. So, so in that, and after I normally come out of those meditation, there is a sobbing, crying of a release because mm-hmm. of all the tearing and pulling away all that nastiness away from your spiritual self. You are cleansed and refreshed. So now it's time for you to cry and let that go. And so, yes. So then we walk back into the world, right? We can work in the world, but not be of the world, yes. right? So, but that environment tries to trigger you and trip you up. And that's mm-hmm. what you were talking about with coming to America yeah. too. Because you got to be aware and, and in those practices, you become so heightened aware of what the environment's trying to do to you. Mm, you try, okay. you, you, You can almost see that devil going, I thought I would trick you and give you this, but you didn't fall for it. And it's and it's that heightened awareness. And I think that's why I write a lot about awakening that inner spirit to create that awareness so you can see who you truly can be. Now, who you are, you have to work. Okay. No, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm asking you questions. Okay, because I just <laughs> know okay. what you do. Okay. Um, <laughs> So to, to get to your level, level in martial arts, did your children were they raised in that? Or do some of your kids take after you in that in that field, or do they have a sense of discipline the way you have? They do have a sense of discipline. Um, one or two daughters or children too will have had more, but as they got older, they start then they take it in. You know what I mean? So everyone is. They understood the level of, of watching me, understanding me, and then they start to introduce it into their lives at certain parts of their lives. Some did a little earlier, some do, is doing it a little later. So yeah, I I think because they watched me do it, it's part of them, and all of a sudden they're like, well, I'll do the same thing in this fashion. I mean, mm-hmm. they may not do it exactly, but they do it in this fashion. So yeah, I've been blessed that way. Awesome, awesome. I, I feel like I'm. I don't switch. I'm, I'm interviewing you, Doctor Dye. I'm sorry. I, I just always wanted to know when I see you out. I mean, because I think a lot, a lot of times for me, my six children, they said because we had you, you exemplify how right. to go from here to there. Yeah. 
Yeah, my oldest son, the one that retired Marines, he was like, it's almost like we had a personal mentor, trainer walking us through life, showing us that feelings are real, showing us that you can have a breakdown, but don't stay there. And, right. you know, and I think that's how they was able to never and they able to navigate through life now. But, you know, and I and I and my fortunate blessing is their mothers were amazing people. Mm-hmm. And I am. I have been blessed. I know there is not so much great people out there, whether it be men or women, but mm-hmm. they've also had a very good balance of their mothers to see the, the, themselves in her, as they see themselves in me. And so that would. So I, I feel blessed that way because if it wasn't for the the, the amazing mothers I've had in mm-hmm. my life and who loved me and I loved it that they saw that and so they saw opportunity and potential Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and i think that sometimes we miss in ourselves we don't see the true love that we may have for ourselves that we have for other people and that's what you were talking about of like you got to feed yourself a little bit sometimes yeah and that's just the world taught us you know uh, about if something's wrong if you, you're selfish, your ego. T- if you show yourself, no, right, no, you know, no, 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 no. It, it's it's just being selfless. It's yes. not it, that. That's not. And see, I had it wrong for years. Yes. You know, I thought humility was forgetting about me. That's what I thought humility. Okay, I'm no, I'm you know, and that just so my mindset going. Okay, it ain't about me. I'm no, just focus on everybody else. Now that I, if the Lord's will, I be 49 in June. I'm just now like I had it backwards all this time. Mm. Yes, I'm a humble person. I walk in humility, but that doesn't mean I have to. I have to forget about me. Right. You know, and so that's so yeah. And um, now that everybody's eighteen and over, I'm just when oh I told them maybe okay, you how can you come out of high school in May? I said, I don't know where I'm gonna be. I might be on a on the road somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you know what I I do want to stress this. It takes asking for help. Yeah. It takes being completely broken and open to learn. Yes. Because if you think you know, you're not gonna have anyone pour into you. Right. So it could, asking for help, completely open to learn and then practice. You have to practice daily of your inner strength to be externally shown. And, and you know what? Well, I learned you teach people how to respect you. We think because we're good hearted people, we don't want to cause anybody harm that right. the world will reciprocate that. It, it won't. It won't. And I, I'm telling you. <laughs> I, hey, I'm just gonna learn. This is stuff I wish I would have known then. This, this, I'm like, oh my gosh, why I had to learn all this stuff. And go, I was just telling my younger daughter that about, about right before we got on, I said, you know what? This lady hit me up yesterday, and she said, oh, I just want to talk to you about your business. I want to see what's going on. So I reached out to her, and I said it turned into a freaking forty five minute conversation of her ranch. I said, you know what? Back in the day, they used to have a one nine hundred six number. Back in the day, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call up a one eight hundred number. If you just want to talk, get some stuff off your chest, this is my cash out for ten minutes. Because people will take of your time and don't realize how valuable it is. You know, we have to get to a place. It's not about somebody being stuck up, nope. unless you personal friends with somebody and you got that relationship. That's different. That's different. But when you got random people, oh, Dr. Hold, I want to connect. I want to talk, and then when I call you. Thinking you and you just want to ramble on just with you have shown no respect for me, you know. And so, but if I tell you, well, look, it's gonna be ten dollars for that ten minutes, he go my cash up, then I'd be wrong. But I'm learning now how to self love mm-hmm. and spend some little compassion on myself, you know. That forty minutes was just I was I was mad when I got off that phone. I'm like, did she just use the act like she want to ask about my business? She can ramble on about whatever's going on. I say no. I I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I like, no, I, because I so I so much want to share, and yeah. then I'm like, what did I just do? <laughs> I think I just wasted my time. And they don't care. They yeah. don't care if they waste your time with their foolishness and their ramblings. And and I say, you know what? I, I'm I'm gonna post it. Anybody? Hey, if you feel like you need somebody to talk to, or you just ain't got nobody. To $30, $30 for 30 minutes, and I'm just $10 for 10 minutes. Hey, if you, you know, you would not be wasting my time with these ramblings. And that's when you start to love yourself. Mm-hmm. That's when you're starting to feel you don't have back in the day. I was like, oh, okay. I would have sat on the phone hours. 
And then I realized how people, and it, this way used to get me, when people will waste your time, but soon they, oh, I got to go now. I got to get back to work. And I'm like, you don't waste my time. For, you know, so I'm just learning that people would take as much as you they can take as long as you, you know, don't say anything about it. My sister, thank you. Um, God bless, man. And I, and I love that. I'm glad you came, were able to come on today. And, and um, we talk again all the time, but I will see yeah. you again sooner than later. Thank you, All sister. All right. Thank you, Dr. Dyer. All right, bye. Whoa.